Hey there everybody, Professor Cloud here with another game recommendation. Um, this is a game that I've been following for about a year now. I first saw a trailer of it at the Summer Games Fest in 2022. Uh, and I then played the demo of it not, not too long afterward at whatever the next Steam Next Fest was. The game is called Dredge. I consider this to be a part fishing simulator game and a part Lovecraftian adventure quest game. Uh, you are a fisherman on a commercial fishing boat, and you are out there fishing uh, different types of fish. You're also doing dredging of different uh, materials and things along those lines. There are numerous islands, and it has a very Lovecraftian feel, um, including Lovecraftian-style monsters. And Every single port that you go into, there will be individuals that will give you quests. Again, these quests are then going to be tied to either you going to another port or you finding things on shipwrecks or finding specific types of fish. You get the idea. Uh, so let's jump right in and take a look at what the game actually looks like. <clears throat> I am fairly early in the game because that's where I want to show you the basics. You're going to start at a port just like this here called Greater Marrow. And at each port, there will be different stores or uh, services that are available. In this case, I have both a dry dock as well as a shipwright. I'll, take, I'll show you those in a second because obviously they are going to help provide you with things related to your boat. You have access, of course, to your storage. And then in this particular town, we have access to a fishmonger where I can sell any fish that I've caught on my trip. At the very top, you'll see the time of the day. It's 6 a.m. Every single day will start at 6 a.m. assuming that you rest. And you will need to rest or otherwise bad things will happen. Um, and then we also have the ability to undock, rest, and <clears throat> do research. Now... Research comes in the form of research parts, and they allow you to get upgrades for your ship. And then these upgrades eventually are purchasable via the shipwright or you know the different services at the different ports. You get the idea. <clears throat> Let's take a quick look at the ship. So your ship has two different tabs, as you can see here. And actually, I don't need to remove my, my video. Uh, you have a cargo and you have a cabin. Now, the cargo is obviously where you're going to put your fish as you're catching it or put the materials that you find from shipwrecks and so on. Uh, you have a light up there at the top. I have two different fishing rods. That will expand over time. There are also crab pots. There are fishing nets. And these all allow you to uh, capture different marine animals. And then down at the bottom, underneath of my, my picture, uh, is the engines and of course those will allow to be upgraded over time you'll also see right above my video screen that there is damage uh if you hit rocks if you hit uh if you get attacked by a monster damage will be taken and, and as you can see you can only take damage three times in the cabin is where you're going to get access to the different quests that are available they're called pursuits and as you can see here, uh, there are certain ones that I have marked through as I have completed them. And then there are some. I have one here for specific crabs. I already have turned in one of them. I still have the other one to turn in. By the way, that is a great thing about this game. You don't have to keep things in storage or on your ship as you're waiting to turn things in. You can turn them in one at a time, two at a time, however often you want. And the individual person asking for it will hold on to it until you return with the other parts. Uh, I then have a quest that is uh, lumber and scrap, and that's going to be tied to different shipwrecks and so on. But then I also have things like searching for relics, searching for specific items at different shipwrecks. And there are individuals at each town that will ask me for these. So to that point, if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, there's the lighthouse keeper, the mayor, and the builder. These are three individuals that I've met at Greater Marrow. And... Each one of them could potentially give me a particular quest. Uh, the builder has given me a quest related to the two pieces of lumber and the two scrap. Uh, there is another gentleman who gave me a quest at another island. Uh, so you get the idea. 
Then back at our ship, we then of course have access to the map. And here are all of the different island chains that are available. Now, I have only been to the ones in the center. Eventually, I will start to spread out to others. Uh, but you can see I also have different X's on the map. These correlate to those pursuits that are currently open and available. And then you can also see two little crab icons right in the middle. And those are crab pots that I actually have deployed and I can go and get crabs from uh, over time. The little black dots around the screen are actual ports. Now, some ports are just a dock, you know, a place for you to stop, start research, um, rest, things like that. But there are others that are, of course, tied to towns, and you're going to get access to those services and people at that time. We then have the encyclopedia, and this is just like any other uh, monster guide that you would see in an adventure game where as you find different fish... Uh, different marine life and so on, they will get placed into your encyclopedia. So as I scroll through here, you can see each of the ones that I have currently caught. And then as I get to number eight, the swordfish right there, I have not caught. And the reason I haven't caught it yet is because it's oceanic and I don't have a fishing rod for that yet. We also will collect messages, bottled messages over time, and they're just additional lore and text to go, context to go along with the game. They actually don't provide any value unless you enjoy reading that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and then you'll also see bookshelves. Over time, you will find books either at, they will be given to you from different individuals or you'll find them as part of shipwrecks. And as you, if you put them into your bookshelf, over time, they will give you additional passives uh, so in, in this case, I have a 10% chance to not reduce the fish stock when catching a fish, and rods will reel in fish 10% more effectively. So this is the basis for a port. Now, let's talk about the basis for the actual fishing part. I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave the dock, and we're going to go right to the very first fishing spot, which is right here. And you can see on the left-hand side, we get what type of fishing spot it is, coastal, and how many fish are in there, high. That means that there's a lot. There's usually around eight. So I just start fishing, and all I have to do is hit the green spots. That's it. And then it'll show up in my inventory. Let me remove my face cam. So it'll show up right there in my inventory, and then I can move it around. I can rotate it. You get the idea. And I just do that over and over again for different fish. Now, as my fishing improves because of my upgrades, of course, the efficiency will become better. It'll happen faster. But as I also talked about, because of the fact this is a coastal fish, I have to have a fishing rod that is also coastal in nature. So this custom rod, uh, you can't really see it, me clicking on it, but the custom rod pop-up showed and it does show that I do have a uh, operational that its fishing speed is a plus 44 percent and that it catches coastal fish um one other quick thing to point out the time of day when you're fishing actually stops <laughs> so you'll not even as I'm sitting here talking to you the the time is not changing the time only changes as you're driving this is important to know because as you get near to nighttime, weird Lovecraftian things start to happen. Hence why I need to have a light up here at the top. And I'm actually in the process of researching a second one uh, so that I can get better visibility because fog rolls in, monsters start to appear, all kinds of wonderful things. So let's go ahead and leave this particular spot. And the next thing I'm going to do is head to one of my crab pots, which I have right over here. The crab pots, as you can see up here at the top, specify the number of days remaining. Each crab pot is out there for a certain number of days. Uh, they do take damage over time, but you can get them repaired just like you can get your boat repaired. But you can see what's in the crab pot. I'm just going to leave this here and let it go. Uh, crab pots, just like everything else, can be upgraded as well. If we go over then to my second crab pot, which is over here. 
Uh, they have little green lights at the top of them so that you know exactly where they are. You can see I have a special type of crab called the Fiddler Crab, and this is something that I need for one of my quests. So I'm going to grab this and place this into my inventory, and there we go. Uh, now, the, the crab pot still has one more day remaining, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it here and see what else I can get in the meantime. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the dredging. So there is a, if we go back to the map, there is a Xbox, an X, around the left-hand side of Greater Marrow. That's where a uh, shipwreck has occurred. It's part of a quest line, and that is going to require dredging. So we're going to go ahead and head towards that and see if I can figure out where it is. But well, there's actually a dredging spot right here. Shapes in the deep. All we got to do is X to move the arrow. And then over time, I will, in fact, get... In this case, I got a worn gold ring. Now, there's a different uh, vendor over on another island that prefers this kind of stuff. That prefers trinkets, as they're called. Uh, so I will be turning that into him rather than to the fishmonger. But I could sell it to the fishmonger. I'm just not going to get as good of, of a price for it. I actually don't know what this is. Bolt of cloth. All right, that'll go in storage. And that's now depleted. So again, let's keep going towards where the shipwreck is supposed to be. And let's double check real quick. Okay, so it's inside here. Okay, I think I see it. Yeah, now, I don't know if you can tell this, but if you can see the little lights coming off of this spot. That usually means that there's a special type of fish here. Oh, and I'm not going to be able to do this. Okay. Um... Ah, here we go. Relic discovered. Okay. Uh-oh. I don't know what to do. I just took a lot of damage from a monster. Okay, I need to move some things around here. Oh, crap. I lost the Fiddler Crab. Alright, let's do this again. So that's what I mean by staying out too late. So I need to get back to civilization as soon as I possibly can. Stone trembles before you. Unknown symbols glow from within. Place your hand on the stone. A sudden chill rushes through the marrow of your bones. Surging up your arm, your neck, a deep vision enters your mind. The town of Greater Marrow burns. The lighthouse lies collapsed. Its light extinguished. A red glow fills the sky behind a cyclone that drains the world. No idea what any of that means, obviously. All right, I gotta be careful here.
because my lights aren't really that fantastic. So, and I'm not going to get much in the way of sleep when I get back. So as you can see here, every time I come in, some somebody may want to talk to me. In this case, the mayor. Oh my, you look exhausted. You're not forgetting to get some sleep, are you? As I always say, taking frequent breaks is an important part of being productive. But just as you know, I talked about, staying out late is going to potentially cause problems. So let's go in here, and I'm going to do a quick sell all my fish. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is place this in storage. Because I'm sure I'm going to need them later. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go to the ship, the shipwright. And go up here to repair all. And we're all fixed and, and ready to go for the next day. Um, unfortunately, I did not get anything related to uh, any of my quests. So, uh, I did get a Fiddler Crab, but unfortunately it got, you know, eaten by the monster. So, uh, if we look at my pursuits, there is a search for a relic. And one of them is, I found a large key, I should return it to the Collector on Blackstone Isle. I also remember I picked up a trinket. So what we're going to do to wrap the video up is we're going to go and take a look at a second location so that you can see the differences. But at the end of the day, this is the loop. You're going to start each day. You're going to potentially go out for fish, depending upon if you need money. You may not need to fish every day because, and actually let me turn my, my face came back on. You may not need to fish every day. If you've got enough money to last you for a few days and you want to focus on clearing some of the quests, you absolutely can do that. But you're also going to potentially need money for your upgrades, for your uh, new purchases and things like that. And actually, let me show you that real quick. So if we go to the shipwright, she is going to sell new items that we have uh, that we have researched. So if we go back over to here, these are all of the rods that she has available for us. As we research new ones, they'll show up here for her to sell. Same thing with engines. Same thing with nets. And same thing with lights. So, but, as you can see here, the cracked ball, which is what I'm currently running, is $100. The next level, the cloudy lens, is $180. So, each one of them is going to cost you a different amount. So, what I'm actually going to do is I have enough money here. I'm going to go ahead and buy this. And I'm just going to place it in storage. I'll install it a little bit later. But now I have an upgraded light. So if we go to my cargo. And I sit here and I hover over it. I can sell it. Perfect. Now I can go here. Send it to cargo. And install it. Bingo. Done. So now I have a better light. That's how easy it is. So, let's real quickly do a very quick... Oh, and then dry dock is where you do the uh, upgrades. So, this is the upgrade path. Right now, I am focusing on the light. Uh, adding a second light so that I can uh, spend more time out at night. Because that's where certain, a lot of different things happen. And as you can see, I've already parked two pieces of lumber. I just need one scrap. And this one will be available for me to purchase... Uh, or to install on my boat uh, once it's done. But you can see here, I've got in this first set, you're not allowed to get to the first set until you clear, or get to the second set until you clear the first. But uh, two new engine spaces, four net spaces, rod spaces, and then the next level would be a tier two hull upgrade, which means that the hull can sustain one additional impact. So right now we're at three, this would get me to four. And you get the idea. And that's how it goes moving forward. So, let's take a quick trip. Yeah, not much in the way of... of matter of fact, what I am think I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to go ahead and rest again. 
And as you can see, I could actually stop my resting right now and go, you know, directly out at night after a good 12-hour rest, and that would be perfectly fine. Um, you don't ever have to worry about eating or anything like that. This is just kind of a fun game. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and undock. And what I'm now going to do is head across to the boat over there, the, uh, the town over there. I'm going to stop at my crab pot and take everything. And then I'm going to come over here. So as you can see, there's a trader here. And the trader likes trinkets. You enter a brightly lit shop. It's packed with antiques, the shelves full of jewelry and other baubles. An old man peers at you over silver spectacles. Hello, is that... No, uh, I don't believe we've met. Forgive me, my eyes aren't what they used to be. I specialize in antiques and jewelry. I'll purchase any special trinkets you happen to have. Have you got anything nice with you today, perhaps? So we go up here, the worn gold ring. And we sell it. Quick 15 bucks. <clears throat> and that's really all that we need to do with this guy. Um, you can also see down here in the bottom left-hand corner, there are two individuals that I've met. Uh, one of them, uh, the grieving father, is the one that gave me a quest to find a belt at a particular uh, shipwreck. Uh, I have not found it yet, but that is something. You'll also see here that I have access to my storage. So you, every pier that you go to, you will get access, or every town that you go to, you will get access to your storage. All right, so let's go ahead and leave here real quick. And we're going to go... Uh, nope, wrong way. Over to this little island. Which is called Blackstone Isle. Now, you might be able to see a fish right there. Uh, unfortunately, I can't fish that yet because it is oceanic and I don't have the necessary rod. But this gentleman is the one that asked me for the trink for the uh, relics. So we will come here. And we go to the ruined mansion. Uh, you enter the collector's house. He's standing at the back of the room, still holding the silver and crimson book. He seems impatient. Well, you have something, don't you? Show me. And we give him the ornate key. You hand him the key. The cold metal shimmers a strange shine as he holds it. The shape of the key, the teeth, the head, now somehow seem changed, smaller. Has it always been this way? Is this all? Where's the lock? The collector grows agitated. It seems the pieces we're looking for have traveled further than I anticipated. Much further, I suspect. In that case, allow me to aid your travels. He turns a few pages in his book and mutters something low under his breath. A burst of light fills your vision, and you stagger back briefly. Ability unlocked. Haste. Otherworldly speed at a price. Now go. We have more relics to uncover. My intuition tells me that the current may have carried some debris to the southeast towards Gale Cliffs. Make that your priority. I'll mark a location on your map where you can begin your search. Anything else? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say nothing. And then, as I said, we have access to the storage, the mansion, and the workshop. Now, the workshop has two items in it, but I don't know what they're going to be used for yet, so I'm going to leave them there. But if we go back to my cabin and go to the map, we should now have a red X, which we do down in the bottom right-hand corner, and Gale Cliffs. So this is the way that the game works. We fish, we dredge, we interact with individuals at different islands, we learn about what's going on, and we try to avoid getting attacked by monsters at night. That's basically the, the premise of the game. Um, I love everything about Lovecraftian uh, lore and context. Uh, the fact that it is based around fishing. Uh, Lovecraft loved to talk about a specific town called Innsmouth, which was a fishing village. Um, and he really went into a lot of depth around the monsters and the fishermen that lived in that village. So this is, I think, inspired by that. Um, and then the whole entire fishing mechanism, yes, it's gamified big time. But as someone who grew up in a waterman family, 
I, I love it when people put fishing into games. You can see on my YouTube channel, there's a, a fishing guide for New World, for example. And I, that's all that I talked about was fishing. Because I love the way that fishing was implemented in New World. So, I'm having a great time with this game. I think it is an excellent game. It's not for everybody, but anyone who has an interest in fishing or Lovecraft should absolutely pick this game up. Um, it is an indie title that was published by Team 17. And uh, it just came out this week on March the 30th, uh, 2023. So I hope that you've enjoyed this content and I hope that uh, you find this valuable. If so, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in my next recommendation video. Talk to you soon.